strep throat attack you in your throat, but not in your hair? That may seem like a stupid question, but ever since my inquiry with the streptococcus bacteria, I realized the potential of the fields of nanoscience and computer science due to the fact that they can solve similar problems. When people talk about science, they usually talk about how what we've done in the past will affect today. I will be talking about how what we will do in the future will affect the future of the future. That's a futureception. And when I mean future, I mean 30 years from now. First off, let me start off by describing how small the nanoscale is. The most common measurement on the nanoscale is the nanometer. If you take one millimeter on the side of the ruler we never use in the United States <laughs> and divide it one million times, you have one nanometer. Now, when you get to one nanometer, you get to the smaller part of the DNA bases. Then you, when you get to 100 nanometers, you get to those viruses that attack you. And when you get up to 10 times a nanometer, 10 times 100 nanometers, you get a bacteria. So the first perk of nanoscience is the fact that it's precise. When you take something doctors do every day, which is laser eye surgery, it is so accurate. It is impossible for humans to replicate what a beam does unless it's been intercepted. But the future of the precision that nanoscience gives us, what we can do is eat tiny nanorobots, that may sound disgusting, but, and that will do surgery for us. And we won't feel any pain in the surgery we do, the surgery will be fast, and no doctors will be involved, so the margin of error will go down completely. No, that does not mean that I'm offending doctors. Please don't take that bad. <laughs> the next perk of nanoscience is sensors. Cancer is one of the most causing diseases where people die, unfortunately. What these nano sensors will do is they're going to go up to a cancer cell, and they're going to be like, Row! and then what they're going to do <laughs> is attach themselves onto the cancer cell, and then they're going to inject the medicine into the cancer cell, and they will destroy it. But today, we don't have the medicine. So what we're going to do is take chemotherapy, which we have today, and we're going to know where we need to aim. Professors Dennis Sylvester and David Bloch from the University of Michigan created these tiny microcontrollers that they could put on victims of glaucoma. Glaucoma is a disease where your eye has extreme pain, pressure, and it, you can get blind. It really sucks. <laughs> so what, they, what it does is it injects a medicine which opens up a canal which creates pressure in your eye. Not only does nanoscience have a huge future, but so does computer science, as I said earlier. Bionics is the mimicry of objects in nature. This man was in an explosion. His, he got his legs taken away from him there was a C4 explosion, and currently he's in rehab. This allows him to walk today and co collaborate with other workers without being in a, in a wheelchair. So with these, in the future what we can have is these tiny robotic eyes, which we can follow our hands. The company name is Second Sight. The CEO says that they can see objects. Sadly, we can't see the colors but we can follow our own movements, as I said earlier. Now if we attach this to a machine that knows everything called Watson, we will be able to find symptoms faster. Let me explain this. So you're going to go into your doctor's, OK? He has this huge probe. You walk into it. You say, oh, looks like my heart rate is 70, 70 beats per minute. Looks like my blood, blood pressure is at a certain level and looks like my oxygen level is at 98%. So then when I'm sick, I'm sneezing, I'm coughing, I have fever, it sucks. I walked into the probe again, my heart rate went up, it's 90 beats per minute, my oxygen level is 96%, and I have a higher blood pressure. I have bronchitis. So all the doctor has to do is sign a paper with dirty handwriting 
And that says that I have my prescription medicine. So Watson will never have misdiagnosis. There's no need of doctors now to make a diagnosis. Now Watson will also tell the doctors what to do. Like for me, I had to take an antibiotic, but for a cancer patient, they would need chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Finally, if we don't have anything to do, we need to be able to see what doctors are working on. They can use CT scanners to take a thousand images of your picture and create 2D images and create one big 3D image they can spin around in a circle or do whatever they want with it. Then they have MRIs. MRIs take the texture of your muscles and then of the muscles and if they're weak it'll show red, if they're strong it'll show blue or the vice versa depending on the technology. So what they can do is co combine x-rays, MRIs, CT scanners and when you go into a surgery they will have a diagram they can zoom into and they'll see what part is blocking, what part they need to operate on. People may say, Hunter, why do I even care? Who needs this technology? The reason we have this technology, or why I'm bringing it to you, is so that when we know what is forthcoming, we can make bigger changes on it. What I'm saying is, when we knew about if we knew about global warming 200, 300 years ago, we could have prepared a lot better. So what I'm saying is, now that we know what cancer is, maybe we can prepare better in 100 years. I believe that by making things more smaller and complex, they will be, be more practical and usable. Whether it has to do with the medical field or any other field. Now it's up to you to pick which field you're going to apply it to.